This is where's the money. That sucked. Let me do that again. <laughs> this is where's the money. <laughs> Where? Hey, Johnny, tell them what they've won. Money. Money is what they've won. You ask me, where's the money? Where's the money? I mean, I don't know where the money is. I've never been good with figures. You know that. I don't know anything about math. It was never my good subject. So give me give me the rundown of of the service specifically because even as I in this video represent the the voice of the youth, I'm still beguiled. Wait a second. Ounce of uh, <laughs> music services that keep cropping up. So l lay out Turntable FM for right. the audience. Before we do that, I'm putting a timer on here. We got 12 minutes to do this. Our our, our episodes are too long. This should be a brief episode, so I'm going to do it. I'm hitting 12. When you hear it go off. We are done. No matter what we're saying, we're done. Here we go. Start. Timetable or uh, turntable.fm is a uh, basically a virtual DJ environment. It started up on the web where you could actually go into a DJ room and you can make requests, or you could actually set up a DJ uh, booth and you could play spin spin music quite literally and share that music. It was a social environment. So all the big luminaries in the technology industry, like Vaynerchuk and O'Malley and all these guys, were diving in. This is the greatest thing. It's awesome. I'm and then it just stopped about uh, six months ago. These guys raised seven and a half million dollars on a thirty-five million dollar valuation for zero revenue. They used to be a company called Sticky Bits, which did a whole bunch of other things, and they moved into here. It's a novelty, and it has been a novelty. And what we've seen over the last while is a decline, decline in usage, simply because they all of a sudden this is a whole bunch of copyright protection, so that they're, they're only available in the United States, no other country, maybe other European countries, but they had to negotiate copyright restrictions with the music that they were playing obviously it just and made then, up sued now it's true but but then companies like spotify came into you know were launched in north america and they've seen a precipitous decline in activity so what do they do they launch what a mobile, mobile app. app and uh they were offered apparently a whole lot of money 40 million bucks from spotify a while back and they turned it down thinking that they could go this on their own and now they are suffering from a feature of, of being a feature of somebody else's big broad product right these guys are not a product they're not a revenue generator right now and spotify get, offered the money turned them down so what did spotify do launched it so that's where we are right now so they decide to launch this mobile app which is basically the same experience as their website uh shared music experiences social shared music experiences so i have a very clear opinion about this because i didn't like it six months ago i hate it today so what do you think well, so I, you know, I was being a little facetious before because I, I have I have seen a lot of people pick up and use Turntable FM because it oh, does. Oh, young people. people. Yeah. Well, not no, actually, not even young people. So like people like you know like authors like Neil Gaiman and things like that. People that you wouldn't necessarily expect. As it's a it's kind of a cool way to uh, connect with a group and say, hey, I'm going to be putting on some music here. Come connect with me. See, kind of see my my set and things like that. Uh, yep. Even though I could obviously never participate. Uh, I do agree with you in saying that it is a feature of a larger product. While it is a, is a niche kind of uh, novelty, I wouldn't use it regularly. Um, and us coming back from a mobile background, the idea that somehow mobile is going to save, like mobile is the last res refuge of a def desperate company, I, I don't even see this service being something that is is really viable for like a mobile use case, which is when you're listening to music is way more passive. like. Turnable FM, when, when you're participating in a group and you're seeing what's going on, it's way more socially engaging. That's not going to happen when I'm walking around with my iPhone down the street. That's when I'm flipping songs on Shuffle or using something like Ardio. And it, it, that's exactly the point, is that we have been conditioned in mobile to use these devices in 10 and 15 second increments looking at the screen 200 to 300 times a day. We're not mm -hmm. engaged looking at, down at a screen like this for like 13 or 14 minutes and, and getting engaged that way, it just doesn't make any sense. This is a poor mix or poor match f for the, a mobile experience. Passive, yes. Passive music playing experience, yes. But you already have Spotify. You already have all these other, you have Pandora. You have all these other services that, that fill that need. So it really seems like this is a desperate maneuver in order to be able to see if they can extract any revenue, add revenue probably from, uh, from the mobile environment. Well, yeah, ad revenue, and then probably a way to, to bump up growth, right, or activity, because they're they're probably they're probably looking to stabilize that. And, um, I, I I really honestly, so we have, we have issues with the service 
as, as a mobile service. We have issues with the service in general. Monetizing that, the last thing that I want to do is use a service like Turntable FM passively and not really get the, the core benefit out of it to listen to someone DJ for me only to be given ads. Right. So I'm now looking at ads for someone else to play music for me that I have no control of. Well, you know what? If it gets over the uh, copyright issues, where if every play has to re requires somebody to pay somebody, maybe the ads are the way to do it. But I, I mean, I hate banner ads. I think that it's a terrible excuse of an advertisement. We ranted about this long enough. But um, what about what do you think are opportunities for them to make money? How can they? How can Turntable pivot and turn what they're doing into an actual revenue generator? Can they do this with just in the mobile play? Forget the website because that's a whole other issue. Well, okay, so we're, we're talking about, um, just before this call, engagement being the new marketing, right? Yeah. I still think that the, the tool in the process is, is a cool way for, for brands or people or musicians to engage with an audience, um, just to get that kind of one-to-one -one automatic feedback of what you're playing or trying new music. So maybe, maybe it's a refuge for musicians and labels to demo new acts. If, if it's all about getting buzz, um, why not get Sub Pop on there and they say, hey, we, and it's not really DJing at that point, it's not like playing a set list, but like here's Sub Pop's list of like upcoming artists around South by Southwest or something like that. Let us know which ones you engage the most, most with and that's a, that's a kickoff to some other type of model. And then brands are paying for some way for that, you know, higher level access or something. I really, li I really like that idea, the idea that, that it is a, um, you know, sometimes that they do, I mean, my, my man Springsteen's about to release his album on March, uh, March 7th. March 6th, actually, uh, called uh, the Wrecking Ball. Go and get it. But he, they have listening parties, and he did it in Paris this year, which was he brought in a bunch of journalists, and he sat down and played them every song. I don't think he was there, but they played him every song. And then this would be the perfect listening party application, something like turntable.fm. App, you know, for music discovery, this would be incredible, where you create a community for early release music, and you could offer your comments and feedback and suggestions and polls and all those kind of things. That is an awesome idea, Doug. Yeah, and it really, the one thing that really helps with this is that it, it slightly bypasses the legality of trying to sign agreements for all the music everywhere just for it to be a useful service because anyone that you're partnering with or wants to use the service would have to sign like just a d disclosure saying, yeah, you hereby give rights to use these tracks for use in Turntable FM. Yep. And that, I think that's the only way that they get to scale. Now, they're obviously going to have to negotiate some big partnerships. I don't know if Springsteen's audience was, would be the type that would do something like this, um, but maybe it, it all. I guess it all depends on how higher up the scale they get in terms of um, connecting to the artist. Yep. If, if they are all about helping people connect with the artist in a really cool way and helping uh, people listening to the music connect with each other, then that's actually something that's valuable and should exist. I like it. I got another idea. What about localized music? Could this work from a location-based music display or music listening app where, where I'm in a city and I'm very interested in what's going on in my local city, which is quite literally, because of my geolocation, you start playing, you start feeding me some new artists that are local, 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 hyper-local. Like, allow me to pull out and see what's going on on a national scale, but what in Ottawa for me in Toronto... What local musicians are pushing their content up through this way? Can I not get, you know, a glimpse of that so that there's, uh, so that I can discover music local, local, local? So then when I go to New York and I log in and I and and it knows that I'm in New York, it tells me, you know, it starts to give me the music scene localized as well from New York or wherever I am. I think you have to go one step farther. I don't think it's local. I think it's hyper local. So you don't care so much about bands in Toronto, no. but I might care about who's playing at Lee's Palace next month yeah. or a small indie rock bar who's looking to, you know, they have live music every night, getting a sense of who plays there. And they, they, they use Turtle FM to just do a, a playlist of the best tracks of upcoming performers. And the venues pay for that or the promoters pay for that? Because that, there's got to be a revenue transaction in this as well, right? Maybe well, maybe it's just like a, a flat monthly fee. Yeah, like it's a it's a promo fee. But but uh, we think that there are probably opportunities for for an application like this, like a music app like this, a discovery application, a social sharing and discovery application like Turntable. The thing is that doing what is what Turntable.fm does, which is getting into a room and listening and spinning music, is does not match how we use these mobile devices. So, But I think that we agree that there's an opportunity here for them to generate revenue if they just kind of get out of this kind of paradigm of, um, of DJing. 
Well, slapping the experience on a mobile device isn't the same as cultivating a mobile experience that expands your audience and uh, potential revenue streams, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, hopefully this is just phase one for them, but you know, there, there are other opportunities there. Sweet. So, in summary, you think that these guys going down the path that they're going right now, revenue or no revenue? I don't know if they're smart enough to find the revenue. Um, I think there are opportunities there, but I'm not sure if, and maybe not smart enough, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's the path um, that they're, they want to take, if that's the app that they wanted to create. And, you know, if, if, you, know, if you only want to do a certain thing, like it's turntable FM, there, there is that DJ element. Um, if you're not willing to expand that breadth, you're, you're missing on opportunities. So it, it's, it's really up to them. Uh, I think that I'll be a little bit more bold than you and say that what they're doing right now is a flash in the pan, just like the first time they went around. And if they don't change their business model, they don't start thinking a little bit differently, nobody's going to remember what turntable.fm is six months from now, let alone what they were a year ago. They, they change. need to be the app that, peop that helps people at South by Southwest find what the place to be is that night. Could be. That changes everything. It does. For they that one day. Yeah. For that one, or well, for those three days. Yeah. And then the music, maybe even the uh, the, the music festival as well. So that is, there it is. I don't think that this has a chance in, in succeeding in finding revenue. Maybe they don't care about that. But uh, Doug is maybe a little bit more on the fence. But I think that if they change their business model and focus on the way that we use these devices more effectively, not just, as Doug says, slap it on there, um, maybe they do have a chance to make some money. What do you think? That's the important part. Reach out untether at gmail.com leave a comment where you found this on the website or on linkedin or wherever you found this this podcast we'd love to hear if you think that turntable.fm has a chance a hope of being here next year that's it episode full episode without a mention of facebook mobile ads oh nice oh dang <laughs> brutal and we got it in before the 12 minute buzz thanks everybody for watching we'll see you next time on where's Bye. the Bye. money later douglas Hey, that didn't suck as bad as the last one. That was good. <laughs>